So we're getting ready for the second of these two matches today here as the under 17 championships continue here out of Panama City. It'll be Canada and Costa Rica, Costa Rica and Canada. And it'll be the 11th time these two teams face off as it's been a very tight series historically. Both teams very intent on being, uh, many would probably consider them dark horses to be able to get the one of the two spots for the spots that are up for grabs to go to India. As you see the conditions on the pitch, it'll still be considered for a hydration break as the wind does help out a little bit here at the Maracana when coming from the south to the north. 1-1 one, one draw for Suriname and Cuba in the first leg, as in the first of these two matches as Costa Rica were the champions of Central America as they qualified winning that tournament. They're looking for their second ever title. Back in 1994 was the last time the Los Ticos were able to win. This is their 16th tournament at the under 17 level. Meanwhile, Canada, of course, looking to emulate and why not maybe even surpass the performance that they had back in 2011 where they ended up in second place. So Canada continuing to look to make strides under, of course, a name that everyone's familiar with in terms of Canadian football is concerned, that of Paul Stalteri. And uh, Stalteri, of course, taking over and looking to take Canada as they make their 16th appearance in this tournament. So we'll see what happens as they end up, of course, with one of the three automatic bids. Canada needing to qualify to get into this tournament. So we will find out how both teams will fare as they're getting ready to come onto the pitch. Favor permanecer de pie para escuchar el himno nacional de Costa Rica, seguido por el himno nacional de Canadá. Yeah. 
So we're getting it ready. We're just moments away from kickoff here is Costa Rica and Canada. Costa Rica looking very loose, very confident as a couple of fans that were wishing them well. You know, giving them a thumbs up here on the Costa Rica, of course. It's a repeat and go back to the under 17 World Cup winner. Three teams that qualified out of CONCACAF to be able to get here. As we check out the lineup, is Montenegro with Roman, Farron, Arce, and Cortez in the back. A 4 2 3 1 for Brian Camacho. Sequeira and Arias holding the middle with Abarca, Munoz, and Alfaro. And Julian Cordero, the young man from. Uh, Deportivo Saprisa, he'll be the man up top. It'll be Brian Lopez, the referee, oh yeah. Yeah. with his compatriots Marco Tulio Diaz and Alejandro Camarena of Panama. He'll be the second assistant. Luis Santander of Mexico will be the fourth referee for this encounter. So we see both captains, of course, Julian Dunn of Toronto FC and his counterpart. You see him right there, that's Christian Munoz, another Saprisa product. Total of six players from Deportivo Saprisa. Their presence with this national team. It was interesting a few weeks ago to be able to see the, a comment. I'll mention that as we see Canada's lineup with Catalano and goal, Ruby Dunn, Legault, and Romeo Faria Baldissimo. Ola Kunle Dadaluk with Okello, and you start to see Stefan Yates out wide. Jonathan David, their man from Ottawa, he will be up top for Paul Stalteri. You see the benches. It was interesting, as I mentioned before, to see the comments as it was none other than the president of Deportivo Saprisa, the one that was mentioning what was going on. It was, of course, President Juan Carlos Rojas talking about how proud he was of how Saprisa was able to develop a huge amount of players, not just for the under-17s, but also at the under-20s, as well as we are underway here at the Estadio Maracana. Roman, as Canada looking to press early on, Jake Ruby. And Saprisa's young representative out wide. It was Fernand Farrion, a young man from Belen. Sequeira looking to control as it goes over in the direction of Julian Cordero. Legault. Baldissimo, back into the middle of the chat for Canada with Yates, but instead of going out wide, he did have Dada Luke out wide and ended up sending it right into the path of Ricardo Montenegro. Costa Rica again looking to play it out and Canada looking to control, but it's then Farrion that chases it back. Sequeira. And Canada again committing fouls. Ruby on the mark. Drops back as Costa Rica dropped the ball back as they keep pressing and it's Abarca out on the wing. Roman. Tefarron. Karim Arce. Bring it back and quickly pressing up forward is Cristian Munoz as he joins up with Cordero. Now Costa Rica with a run down the left side and it's a little bit wide but easily retrieved by Gianluca Catalano. Here comes Canada now with Tadaluc. Early 
on. Again, we start to see both teams really going after each other. They're trying to be a little more surgical, a little bit more precise in their respective actions as they knock the ball around. As Canada starts shifting over to their left. Deep ball again, looking for Cordero. Young man recovers it. Cordero now has some support. Leaves it over to his teammate Abarca. Abarca looking for the cross into the area. The ball taken away there at the last second by Julian Dunn. Costa Rica starting to tighten the screws a little bit early on in this match. We're already four minutes in. I'm uh, Fernie Arias. Cortes. Has Abarca wide open on the right side. Costa Rica looking to start to take action into the middle. David dashes through. David being held and finally the ball a little bit too far and David able to recover after the misplay. Dropping it back looking for Stefan Yates. Tadaluk. Costa Rica again coming out unscathed as it goes over to Jake Ruby. Young man over from Ruby, of course, over with the Vancouver Whitecaps. Lone foreign base player, if you will, for Canada that's starting, of course, is Emile Legault. He's playing over at Auxerre over in France and now quickly breaking out. Lots of room trying to break lines. Costa Rica, ooh, but that pass behind Cordero. Zabarca was trying to press the issue a little bit more. Luke will be a corner kick coming up for Costa Rica. It's Paul Stalteri giving some words of encouragement to the former Canadian international. up by the wind and was driven out of bounds. for Barca is Catalano. Romeo. He's going to try to play the ball out of the back. David, out wide it goes and continues to try and find some type of angle to send the ball into the air. And quickly taken away and knocked away by Karin Arce. Cordero pressuring. And here's where Costa Rica is wanting to make the difference and go on the counter attack, make their transitions that much more effective. Something that Brianci Camacho was talking about leading up to this tournament and something that they've been working on especially during their tour, if you will, of Argentina. For Camacho, it was a very successful tour as they saw a great deal of development from their players. Played some of the best youth academies in Argentina. Played Boca, played with Lanús, played with over nine matches in Argentina. 
para Ron. Arce. Costa Rica looking to be very methodical. As you hear Beranza Camacho giving out indications, barking out instructions. Canada looking very patient here as again it's done. Going over to Jake Ruby. Rocco. Baldissimo. And Stefan Yates as he accelerates down the middle of the pitch, looking for David, but very careful as Yates winning the ball again amidst all types of protests from the Costa Rican bench. And now it's Camille Legault. Ball being crossed into the middle and Costa Rica bringing it down quite easily. It's Abarca. Abarca has been the one that's broken line so far. And that's key right now is it's Julian Cordero waiting to see where the support comes from. It's past two. Too much behind it, not much going on there for Costa Rica. But one thing that's very interesting, it's been Abarca, the one that gets the ball deep, is able to break through in the midfield. And that's what starts opening up options for Costa Rica if they're able to continue to elaborate and trying to generate more passes here. Same thing you're starting to see more with Canada as well, and that's coming more off of Stefan Yates than anything else, more than anyone else, I should say. you start looking at what Anthony Arias is, is looking to do in the middle, he's the one that's trying to become a little bit more active. Out wide, it's Ruby. Yes, again, winning that ball, but Canada recovering it quickly, regaining the second ball. That's been key so far in this encounter. The second balls being won really start the transitions much easier, much quicker. Abarca. Goes to David. Nice bit of work by Christian Munoz to help, but also Baldissimo on the other end, being able to find the right space and make the right decision. Ruby it goes over to none other than Stefan Yates, but he's been marked nicely by Fernand Farrion. far a very tactical and a very strategic encounter for both as of this stage of the match already 12 minutes in Canada much like Costa Rica been very middle of the pitch as you hear all the way in the back Ricardo Montenegro telling his teammates to push up to push the lines forward a little bit more and force Canada to play in reduced spaces Cordero goes down and it'll be a foul being called on the captain Julian Dunn That's recovered by Baldissimo, who's been able to play those second balls very quickly and gain them back for Canada and start to 
move him around a little bit better, especially forward. Dunn and Rocco in the back. Good work there by Cicada. He's been able to destroy in the middle quite well. And it goes to Abarca, but Jake Ruby doing a good job of pressing and knocking that ball away. Throw in here for Costa Rica. Canada left. lost focus. Another ball coming through. And a very dangerous opportunity as Canada was completely looking in the opposite direction. And you heard a Barca saying, hurry up, hurry up, throw me the ball so he can go quickly. And that's where. Costa Rica's big opportunity came. And fortunately for Canada, that ball goes just wide. Sequeira. Rocco. Ball there intended for Noble Okello. As he's able to get it. Young man over from Toronto FC. out of the back as we're already in the 15th minute of play. No score. Costa Rica already with the most dangerous opportunity of the first half is Abarca. Has shown a great deal of awareness on the pitch. Now he's playing down the wing. Byron again to Karim Arce. Alfaro. Zabarca, he waits for the ball, but it's intercepted there. It's deflected and it's recovered by Miguel. And now it's Costa Rica dominating proceedings. Is Canada just waiting, dropping back. Canada in a 4-3-3 right now. Looking for Cordero, but the run being made by Sequeira as well as by Cristian Munoz. Sequeira continuing to battle, but he gets the foul called on him. Deep ball, looking to use speed. Of course, that speed of Della Luke is he's able to win that ball into the middle. Here's a good chance. Spinning around, can't control it. One touch too many to be able to control. And Costa Rica now breaking out, looking for Abarca. As it was Sequeira that is able to win that ball. Abarca again trying to push that ball through, force it in the direction of Cristian Munoz. But good job by Jake Ruby to be able to decompress and help Canada sell the ball down the middle of the pitch. Okello to Jonathan David. And the cross in the middle and it goes over as Canada finally able to get a chance on goal. And there goes again John even David being able to create that opportunity and it ends up going like to Stefan Yates. with the pressure by none other than Anthony Arias. Him and Sequeira doing a lot of damage in the middle of the pitch. No foul and Canada pushing up here is Legault looking for Tadaluk but easily for Montenegro. Both 
looking, especially down the middle, it's interesting to see how things are starting to emerge. Cordero up top, he's being marked tightly by Julian Dunn. He's joined by Cristian Munoz. Montenegro just wants to clear that out, doesn't want any problems. As now Costa Rica will have to drop back and defend. Canada looking to take advantage of the attacks. And so far, when it's not in an all in an out and out transition, we've seen Costa Rica close angles very well on Canada and reduce the spaces that they've been able to create enough with. And that's been the big difference. Meanwhile, Costa Rica trying to be vertical, trying to go on the attack a bit more. But we're starting to see a bit of a different feature as you see more players that can handle the ball in the middle of the pitch and start to go forward at the same time. So you start to see a bit of a mix between the holding and the creative midfielders as they're doing a double duty and they can go on the attack and drop back at the same time. Also be able to rotate and offer some spaces that can be created and also that can go on the attack just as quickly. But mistakes like that help Canada a great deal. Faria. Jordan Faria there. Creating the chance. There's another Toronto FC. I mean, seems like a good portion of this team is represented by Toronto Football Club. Ron is Costa Rica just not a, as a frenetic match as we've seen so far in this first day and a half of action. But still we've seen teams really start to take it to each other. Fayron again deep. Remember this, this pitch is not it's a fairly narrow pitch, not a lot of spaces. And to be able to make those kinds of passes, to be that direct, that really puts you in a disadvantage. And Costa Rica, if you've seen them at the senior side and even at the under 20 level, it's a team that always is looking to push forward. Sometimes with the deep pass, you're gonna see here with Fairon. Serve it deep. Works two function, of course. If the player on the opposite end gets it, it starts the attack. If not, it just helps Costa Rica establish position on the opposite side of the pitch. But then when they start depending solely on that, the middle tends to be lost. And, and that's what's slowly occurring as you start losing some protagonism from players like Cicada and also from Anthony Arias. There's a foul being called there on Baldissimo. As he'll get a talking to and he'll get the yellow card. First of the match. And it comes in the 22nd minute. Right there as he shields away from the ball. Ball. And another thing is creating contact to prevent the opposition from getting to the ball. So that's the reason why that infraction is called. Here's a good chance for Costa Rica from way outside. As Catalano sets up his wall. Cristian Munoz chips it over. Good chance. The ball gets swept aside there at the last possible minute is... Jose Alvaro was already locking and loading. But Jonathan David being able to 
sweep it away, and Canada ends up getting it back. Okello. As Catalano plays it out to Antonio Rocco Romeo. There's Arias. Had a player there for an instant, but he had didn't have enough time to turn back around and it has to go all the way back to Walter Cortez crossing it in there but there's three Canadian players waiting and then you have Jake Ruby waiting just in case that ball decides to go through and it'll be a foul in the middle of the pitch as David he is a very tough customer Kello again looking for David out wide for Ruby. Now Canada with a good chance as run being made by David. Oh, but the deflection going right to Montenegro. He had two players coming into the middle of the pitch, and it would have been interesting to see what he would have done. Should have had it just a little bit more space. As Costa Rica slowly bringing the ball up the pitch. also doing a good job. Notice also in Canada's position, you have five players, now four. As out wide, you start to see the shift by Jordan Faria and also on the near side by Ola Kunle Dadaluk. But whenever the ball's looking to be playing in the middle, one of those two comes into the middle and be, is able to add more numbers. So that's why there's so much limitation in the middle of the pitch when Costa Rica only have two, maybe three in the middle. The same when you have quick passing, you're able to break those types of number disadvantages and be able to create advantages somewhere else on the pitch. See them closing ranks is dropping back is Stefan Yates. Very solid what Canada is doing from that perspective. Arias going to split that ball through, but again need to look at a better decision to develop. There was a player on the left-hand side that was looking to break out. That was Walter Cortez. Would have probably been a better option to play with him as he was starting to run forward. The defensive positioning of Canada right now really preventing Costa Rica from elaborating any clear, concise ideas on the attack. Alfaro going up, he made himself available, he has to drop back. There's the pressure there by Dadaluk. Roman says, you know what, let me just bring it back. Just we could decide to move it around a little bit more. Trying to run through and a good defensive stand there by Canada is, is again, Anthony David. Hola, Kunle Dadaluk. We'll have a hydration break. We'll start to look a little bit at what's going on here. Canada have settled down. As they said, well, you know, they're going to knock the ball around the back. We're going to stay within our lines. We're going to be able to hold our, our own end. And we've seen Canada do a very good job of understanding where they need to do, how they need to shift. But not just shifting individually, but shifting collectively in order for those spaces to remain. And those spaces also not favoring Costa Rica because of the angle that they're taking. And in a way, Costa Rica rushing a bit too much to go forward instead of looking to get more players involved, looking to not be so vertical where it ends up being a situation where they send the ball deep and then they end up losing it and Canada comes back. Now, Canada, in certain instances, have not taken full advantage of it, 
because of Costa Rica being able to drop back and being able to assert their lines. So Paul Stalteri, we'll see how he's able to adjust at the form of Werder Bremen man. will resume no score after 29 minutes we'll have about two minutes of added time after the 45 minutes are done with so we'll have about two minutes maybe three of stoppage time barring any other additional interruptions here's a good chance nice play here's a good opportunity the ball great save there and the ball Unbelievable just missed by Canada, but a tremendous work by, bit of work by Jonathan David, even better saved by Ricardo Montenegro. And unbelievable what Canada had just missed out on there. This is, this shows you a bit of, of something special because David, oh, okay, fine, well, just find some room there to make it happen, one-on-one, -on -one, and then Montenegro, again, making himself wide. And the chance, the shot that goes over as it hits off of the shin of uh, Jordan Faria. Catalano comes off his line again. Here's Abarca, good chance for Abarca. And another save there. It looks like it did get deflected off of Catalano. But Abarca showing the difference that he was able to make. And now he's starting to see a bit of a change of pace. There'll be a corner kick coming up. Cristian Muñoz will be on the service. Barca staying wide is a bit of a distraction there by Ruby, but good work to recognize that there was some room to be able to run diagonally into. We're getting to the final 15 minutes of this first half. Muñoz, while coming into the area, right into the hands of Gianluca Catalano. You hear, of course, the coach, Brianci Camacho, saying, come on, push, push, push. Press. Cortez. As he gets taken, has his feet taken out from under him by Legault. He's like, I know, I know, I know, I know. the fans there's the sun hitting on the east side of the stadium now the shadows beginning to emerge as it'll be a good chance here for Costa Rica off the set piece or Munoz plays it Fanny Munoz again looking to put it in. Oh, he gets knocked just wide. As it was Anferni Arias coming through offside, though. As you see the play. Ruby there trying to play the ball out and Brianse Camacho saying, you know, no, no, we have to press much quicker than that. Brianse Camacho was part of Marcelo Herrera's staff with the Costa Rican under 20s. And many that were at that tournament, late February, early March, were well aware of the Calvary that Costa Rica's under 20 had to endure just to qualify for the World Cup that will take place in South Korea just a few weeks from now. Tadaluk. 
Abarca as he recovers and it goes over all the way to Anfernarias. Tell Teddy, talking to his back line, telling guys move. As they start to bunch up too much in the middle, Abarca saw that he started to go wide. Now it's Cortez on the left side. Start looking at him. As he's already had a couple of incursions into that final third of Canada. Again, side though. And you also get a talking to from the referee. Beautiful Saturday afternoon here in Panama City as we continue our coverage of the 2017 under 20 champ, or excuse me, under 17 championships. Under 20s already happened a few weeks ago. Under 17s now take front and center here in CONCACAF. Baldissimo, now it goes over to Yates. Dadaluk, and it'll be Costa Rica's ball. Cordero, as he's battling the big guy in the middle, that's of course Rocco Romeo. Ruby. Pushed aside was Anthony Arias as he and Sequeira have been dominating the middle of the pitch. And again, it's Arias battling with a Tada Luke that comes out on top. But the Aaron pass leads to another possible counterattack. Here's Abarca as he makes a run. Has a man, but he's offside. Coming through, bounces in, cleared away by Ruby at the last possible second. As sprawled on the ground was Munoz, and he was getting up trying to get to that ball first. Wasn't going to happen as Ruby was in position. The youngster from the Vancouver Whitecaps Academy. Arce, it's again, Costa Rica, the team that's taking advantage of the errant passes and quickly going on the transition. Here's Cortez. It's Costa Rica again, and the Galt coming from behind. There goes out of bounds, it'll be a corner kick. Coming up for Los Ticos. And again, those errant passes, those, those, everything from the wrong decision to a play that really hasn't favored Canada, being taken full advantage of by Costa Rica, although that final product hasn't come as Lagault clearing the ball out. Barca more towards the middle. He's accompanying Cordero. As it was Alfaro missing it. Cortes again looking in the middle, cleared away by Okello. The pressure, the shot goes wide. Not sure if Catalano touched it, but he sure took a swipe at it. Looks like that was the case. Quickly, Abarca, as Canada again gets caught napping on that play. Cleared out this time by Romeo. Yates as Abarca beating him to the ball. Munoz. Dadaluk. Cortez now more towards the middle as he gives it over to Arias. Abarca once again as he's been battling against Ruby. style being shown there it goes over to Jonathan David and he's got a long ways to go but he's got the motor to be able to pass able to run through nice run has one man to beat and again it's Cicada coming up huge has been 
just so dominant. Jurgen Sequeira, young man from Belen, as he drops back and saw some great skill there from Abarca, but not much being produced out of it. And now Costa Rica starting to show some dominance on the pitches. Alfaro, Cortes, back in the middle for Arias, looking to run through for Julian Cordero. In the middle is Munoz as Abarca slowly coming in. Here's Costa Rica. As Abarca say, hey, give me the ball, give me the rock, give me the ball, give me the chance. Again, another chance, another ball that's cleared away by Legault. Bringing it down quickly is, again, Costa Rica with a chance, and Alfaro is able to manufacture a corner kick coming up. That's the fifth one, excuse me, that's the fourth one of the match for Los Ticos as Munoz coming in with the in-swinger. Canada looking for the breakout. You see Paul Stolteri there. Excuse me, that was Branson Camacho, check that. It's Legault. Renzi Camacho watching very intently. It's been Cortes. You can even add Alfaro to the mix over on the left-hand side, but Abarca doing a tremendous job as Cortes now making a run on the goal. Baldissimo down. Tough contact there. The yellow card will be issued to Anthony Arias. That is in the 39th, 40th minute of play, officially. Maldissimo still down. been a favorable stretch for Costa Rica. Now, that being said, only one, I guess you could say, shot was taken on goal. So that, that also needs to translate into opportunities in front of the goal being led by, being defended now by Gianluca Catalano. Done. Yates. Short pass, and again, Costa Rica on the counter. As a yellow card will be issued to, should be, as Stefan Yates pulled down Walter Cortes. Cortes running back as he's been. That's what's happening with Costa Rica right now. They've been able to break those lines that the midfield has created, or at least Canada has created. Abarca now making a run in the middle. Punched away nicely by Catalano, looking very solid, the young man from Toronto FC. Yates. Dadaluk back into the middle for Okello. Nice bit of skill there by Okello. And then follows up by towing the ball out of bounds. Fairun. As we get into the final three and a half minutes of this first half, obviously there will be more time added because of the hydration break. Good recovery by Rocco Romeo Abarca. Oh, finally won by Jake Ruby. Dadaluk. It's Okello. And again, Dadaluk looking to push the issue forward. No, no foul there. Alexander Roman. Munoz doesn't have many options. He goes with Abarca, but Ruby there pressing and preventing Costa Rica from progressing any further. Ball 
ball being stolen here. Great opportunity coming, although the number's not bearing him. The chance from outside, but easily collected by Ricardo Montenegro. Not much of an option for Jonathan David. Again, this has been a game of transitions. The team that transitions the best has had the clear options from both a quality and a quantity standpoint. Ruby going up against Roman. So we get into the final 90 seconds of this first half. No score from the Maracana in Panama City. And so far it's been a match where Costa Rica has had probably the better play. The ball coming through. Here's a good chance. Alfaro, Alfaro! Makes it 1-0 for Costa Rica, 44th minute, and it's Jose Alfaro breaking it open with some patience and precision. All right there, just had enough patience to just pressure that ball just by Legault and 1-0 also going to near post. You see right here the adjustment that he makes Right there, not much that could be done as Catalano pushes forward. And of course, the reaction from Brian Camacho. Now let's see how Canada reacts after this. Because, I mean, it was, you saw it beginning to percolate a little bit more. You started to see it, especially in the past 15 minutes or so that Costa Rica, especially when they went on their transitions, like you see right now, here's Arias. You start to see some numbers beginning to favor them in certain sectors, and as soon as that ball came through and you saw Alfaro making himself available, that ball was going in his direction, that ball was going in. Two minutes of stoppage time. Abarca going up against Ruby. And the foul being called, it'll be in favor of Costa Rica. Costa Rica poised to get one more chance, one more crack at it. You look over at Brian Zervato, sometimes you start thinking he's Alexander Guimarães. It just has a very similar look to him. As Ruby being told to go back a couple of paces. Watch out for the rebound here. You see about three players for Costa Rica come in. Costa Rica's looking to poise, is looking poised to be able to take a 2 0 lead. Of course, time is of the essence. Arias, the ball's taken away quickly. And Canada looking to transition, but dropping back is Karin Arce. what Canada can do here is a good run being made in the middle. Cleared away by Fernan Farrion. Now Costa Rica with one more chance. Abarca opening himself up and now it's Alfaro getting past the defender, getting past the midfield now opening things out wide. A good chance here is it's going to be Julian Cordero. As he shields the ball, he protects it, waiting for some support and it's coming in the direction of Alfaro. But it'll still be Costa Rica's ball. They'll have one more chance. Let's see if they can get it before the end of this first half is we're like a few seconds away, five seconds to be more precise, but it goes over to Arias. Sends it into the middle, Catarano will get it, and that'll be the end of the first half. It took a little bit of time for Costa Rica to start to get the upper hand, but once they started to dictate the pace a little bit more, once they tar started to transition a bit better, they started to position themselves better on the pitch, and that's when the differences came. That's when the numbers started to favor them slowly but surely. And more importantly, that's how they took the lead. So after 45 minutes, the goal by Jose Alfaro has given Costa Rica a 1-0 lead.
So after 45 minutes, you see that Costa Rica, it did take a little bit of time for them to be able to progress and be able to create good opportunities, but they were able to assert themselves on the pitch. You see it on the possession. You see it in the shots that were taken, not just the amount of shots. It was the precision on those shots that really made a big difference for Costa Rica and also just a little bit more alertness. That was the big difference. There's a couple of breakdowns from Canada that could have cost them, but fortunately for Paul Stalteri's side, that was not the case. So 45 minutes in the books, and the lesson was football in transition. And it was mentioned quite a bit in the first half because it was the tell all of what the story was to be in that first half. It was, it was what the match was going to be dictated, who was going to dictate the match based on how they transitioned from defense to offense and vice versa. That was really the big test. Early on, we saw a Canadian side that looked very poised. They looked like they had some good chances, some good potential. But early on, Costa Rica saw that. They dropped back, and they looked to position themselves better. As time progressed, with every passing minute, they eventually started to look for a more direct play. But it was, of course, the most dangerous. And Canada showed that exactly. So what did Costa Rica do? They adjusted from depending solely on the long ball to start looking for more passes there. The set piece came close, but it was offside. And what I mean by the ball at their feet, those types of plays, Abarca was phenomenal. Josue Abarca showing a great deal of skill, also showing some great vision. Meanwhile, Canada on the transitions, yes, they had a few, but the numbers didn't favor them. But when Costa Rica had the transitions in certain sectors, they were favored. The goal was the best case in point because it was Alfaro that made the difference and it was more the system that helped.
getting ready for the second half here at the Estadio Maracana in uh, Chorrillo as wonderful Saturday afternoon fans coming in and out of the stadium and heading over and nearby there's a uh, pathway near the water here the Cinta Costera amongst one of the most beautiful sights you'll see as far as being able to walk around and find the best possible now I'm just saying because of the personal experience I've seen walking around here in Panama City a wonderful place to move around with your feet and of course experiences and places galore things to do and speaking of things to do well both of these teams need to do a few things in order to get the results that they're looking for for Costa Rica of course they want to be able to continue with this one nil advantage that they were able to get after the goal from Jose Alfaro and they're looking to try and add more to it Canada looking to react they had a couple of good chances the best one that went off of the foot of Jordan Faria so we're waiting to see how these two teams regroup and react to their specific realities and the adjustments that need to be made. Costa Rica just need to have more opportunities to be able to create in front of the goal defended by Gianluca Catalano. For Costa Rica, that is what needs to be made in, in the transitions, but they've had them. It's just those final touches at times that have been costly for them. For Canada, it's a case of being able to make the best decision when they start going on the counter attack as the last one to come onto the pitch is Jurgen Sequeira. And we're underway here in Panama City as Canada looking to press forward and press quickly. No changes for either side as the second 45 begin. David making a run inside the area but has to dish it off. Coming into the middle is Stefan Yates. It's knocked away. There's Lagault. Taking too many touches to be able to collect it was and quickly you start to see Faria. Canada coming out with a great deal of energy right now. Okello. Jake Ruby. Gives it back to Okello. Now Canada trying to move the ball around and the dummy wasn't read by Jonathan David and quickly Costa Rica are able to settle the ball down and now they're going to bring the ball up from the back as it's Kevin Arce, Karin Arce, excuse me. Montenegro, Roman, Farron, Arce, Cortez in the back with Sakira and Arias in the middle, Munoz and Cordero will be up top. Alfaro and Abarca out wide for Branse Camacho. Ball gets deflected by Julian Dunn. Sakira rushed it too much. He had a one being made by Cristian Munoz, but he didn't see him. Said he'd send it deep. Catalano with Ruby and Legault out wide. Romeo Dunn in the middle. In the midfield. Right now it looks like it's Benson Fasili that came on. Number 16, trying to find out who he replaced. Now it looks like he replaced. I to find out who he replaced. It looked like it was Baldissimo. He had already suffered a knock earlier in the first half. Also, add to that, Baldissimo already had a yellow card, so that's the substitution in the first of the match. That wasn't announced. 
So Benson Fazili, the young man from Ottawa Internationals. That was in 46, the first one. As it's Alfaro going up against Legault. Costa Rica now with Ben Arias skied up into the six or to the area. Okello as he's knocked down from behind. Again, trying to continue play, but the press by Costa Rica has been successful, especially down the wings. So, already one sub for Canada. Fazili coming in and winning that ball. Goes right past him and is recovered by Arias. Arias again. Trying to slide it through, but not being too successful with it. As it's Dadaluk quickly has that ball and moves it to Sequeira. Very impressive what both Sequeira as well as Arias have been able to do in the middle of the pitch. Both their mobility as well as their capability of holding the ball, passing and distributing. And now here's a good transition opportunity for Canada. Good job by Jonathan David. Now looking to power through the save by Ricardo Montenegro. Great opportunity there and a great of generating play by himself as David muscles through and Montenegro able to parry that ball away. Great save by Montenegro, great diving save and it'll be a corner kick opportunity coming up for Canada. Interesting that you start to see Abarca going up. Ball punched in and good job by Canada to be able to equalize as Montenegro comes off his line. And it's Rocco Romeo equalizing in the 51st minute. Catalano comes off his line. Excuse me, that was Montenegro that comes off his line. And great bit of work here as he's able to beat his man. And when the goalkeeper comes off the line and you hear Paul Stelteri praising his center, central defender just like that, 1-1, one, one, he skies up. He's got some good hops as he's able to equalize things. 51st minute of play, and Canada get that goal back. So great reaction by Paul Salteri's side. He comes through, but Arce, that was his man. Let's see what Costa Rica is going to do now. They were a bit tenuous, a little bit slow. And one of the assistants for Branse Camacho was saying, didn't see exactly who as he was running away. Here's Canada as they have a bit of pressure being put in to their lungs and the cross intended for Jonathan David going far and wide. But the intent was there as Antonio Rocco Romeo with the equalizer. Great work there by Canada to be able, able to recognize that. And Rocco Romeo, of course, being able to make that run and Arce reacting just a little too late. And also Montenegro coming off his line. Obviously he got beat by the ball and as soon as he comes off his line, that net is empty. No one there to really defend and easy pickings there for the central defender from Toronto FC. Started because of a because of a counter as Ronya Bustamante replaces Anthony Arias. So, 
Bustamante comes on, a young man from Club Sport Herediano. Here's again another chance coming through. Great save there by Catalano. Bustamante comes through. ball out wide that Alfaro was looking to send it over to Cortez. And that, that's a one of the two things that really has to be noted. Again, a goal that's a byproduct of transition play because it was a counter that the ball is sent to David, of course, that goes and becomes a corner kick. Start to see how important transition play has become in this particular match. Here's Bustamante getting his first touches, has the ball quickly taken away and again, Canada looking to take full advantage of it. The ball intended out wide for Faria ends up coming up short. It's Costa Rica starting to settle more. Alfaro. Now Canada becoming the more aggressive side, biting the ankles and poking and taking the ball away. That's Faria again with the ball. Arce, Cortes. He's been involved both defensively and offensively for Brianse Camacho's side. Julian Dunn with the stiff arm. Not a little too aggressive possession and it'll be a free kick opportunity for Costa Rica. Chance to shot. Almost. If it weren't for the roof, it would have gone out. And ends up missing the scoreboard up top. Want to send a quick shout out to a good friend, also a good colleague and co worker that I had back in the past, so Mr. Janish Mahalik. Wishing him a pleasant, I think he, he said it was 27th birthday. Doesn't look a day over 29, but he says he's 27, so who knows? But best wishes to Mr. Mahalik. Foul being committed there as Okello makes sure that all the pieces are in place. David, Faria, is Canada much more comfortable with the ball at their feet right now? It's Skarin Arce that wins it and it goes over to Cordero. Being shadowed there on the inside and Canada quickly take the ball away. A lot of difference that we've seen in the middle with the insertion of Benzin Fazili in the middle of the pitch. He's been all over the place and he's been able to extinguish some fires as Alexander Roman 
still a bit shaken up. It's the 59th minute of play. And Roman will be given some treatment on the far side as Jurgen Sequeira comes off and Andres Gomez comes on. Both Arias and Sequeira did lose a little bit of that protagonism in the middle of the pitch. So time to start bringing in some players and Brianse Camacho not hesitating one bit to be able to bring in the players necessary to be able to keep things even. As Alfaro all alone and Costa Rica's lost a little bit of that di of the dynamic that they had in the first half. Canada, it's just a case of being a little bit more aggressive that's been the case so far in the second half. As Costa Rica weren't really expecting Canada to come out with that much energy and it really changed and, and dictated things in a different manner for Costa Rica and they haven't been able to adjust yet. As we've already seen two substitutions for Los Ticos. We'll see how those end up really creating any type of difference. Serrano into a corner. Did the ball go out? Looked like it did, but the second assistant, Alejandro Camarena, said no. Good work there in the middle by none other than Benson Fazili. Faria. Mariam stepping, looking, dropping, but the pass not intended for the right target is it's Abarca. Settling it down, giving it to, again, the recently entered Ronnie of Bustamante. Alfaro. So we don't see that intensity. I'm not seeing the intensity right now from Costa Rica that we saw in the first half. It's more Canada that's dominating, and here's another good transition. Out wide, watch out, as it's number 17, Okanulu Dadaluk, who gets the ball. A chance to shot to save. And goes right past David. Oh, another Aaron Cross. Here's a good chance. Faria! And it was Montenegro again getting a touch on it, putting it just wide. And an Aaron pass. Still waiting to see what Costa Rica can do as they're still barely just getting out of the locker room mentally. Canada threatening to take the lead. Again, last time you saw the matchup. This time around, it's not happening. It's Fernand Farron. Watched on. He's well aware of where Antonio Rocco Romeo is. That does free up a little bit for Noble Okello to be able to find out as you start to see pushing and shoving and positioning and locking and loading. And you see. Some jawing back and forth and some pushing and shoving. And Benson Fazili is already conditioned. Looking for another in swinger. Towards the top of the 18 is Rocco Romeo goes to chase. And the foul being committed there by Abarca. He did use his forearm to get an advantage as we get into the 63rd minute of play. And the ball coming 
through gets just shoved aside, but Canada now starting to press, and here comes again Ronier Bustamante. Bustamante, the run being made. Julian Cordero, is he gonna get there first? No, it's the big man in the back. Julian Dunn, that's able to get it. How wide is Faria? Although you can start making an argument that Cordero was offside, not by much, but he still had a chance to be able to have some complications there. Ball again, and instead it's just the ball given right back to Gianluca Catalano. Costa Rica right now always finding a way to suffer a little bit more than they needed to. And the intensity of Canada been has been the difference so far in this encounter, at least in the second half. Even in the first half, there was moments where there were some mental lapses that offered some advantages for Costa Rica. But you don't see the numerical advantages that Costa Rica had in the early part in the first 45 minutes, you don't see those advantages anymore. You aren't seeing that. It's, it's way too much linear play. You don't see much association in the middle of the pitch. But also give a lot of credit here. David, as he's pressuring, he's going to be brought down, and that's a yellow card. A very easy one is Jonathan David causing all types of complications there. In the 65th minute, yellow card being issued to... Fernand Fairon. Third yellow card of the match. Second for Costa Rica. And again, shows you how quickly things can change in this game. As David will be getting some treatment. That piece is being the big equalizer right now. So David will be getting some treatment. Canada will have a set piece opportunity, a very good one at that from say about 25, 20, 25, um, more like 20 out. Rocco Romeo, again, the reference man. He's wide open, or at least briefly he was, as Ron is the one that comes through and starts marking him, although he's trying to open himself up. A lot of pushing, a lot of shoving, a lot of tall players in that mix. Looking to go near, and it's cleared away as it's Bustamante. And the foul being committed there by number 10, Stefan Yates. And temper's starting to get a little bit flared, and David will come back on. Actually, no, it's substitution. That'll be Luca Petrazzo coming on, and Jonathan David will be subbed off. So that's the second substitution of the match for Canada. And Costa Rica now on the attack. And again, it's one of the recently entered players, Andres Gomez. And standing tall on the far side was Jake Ruby. Petrazo, yet another Toronto FC Academy player. That'll be a corner kick. As we get into the 68th minute of the play, and we're all knotted up at one. Ball coming oh. 
through. And an infraction of handball being called on Julian Cordero. Now you start looking at the options. There's still one sub on each side. You start to look at Felipe Flores, Gravian Fonseca, Jexi Harkin, Anderson Fernandez, and Justin Montero, as well as Andres Hernandez for Costa Rica. Alessandro Hoyapsport with Johan Leburis, Ryan Amorim, Jose Fernandez, and Zachariah Abde. The options for Paul Stalteri. It'll be interesting to see how things play out as Farias quickly become one of those engines for Canada. And Montenegro looking solid inside his own area. As Costa Rica, a lot of room down the wings. Player we haven't seen too much is Abarca as of recently. Cristian Munoz, who's dropped back a lot more now with the two substitutions that have been made. There's an offside being called on the near side. Branza Camacho not too happy with what he's seeing right now. He's talking quite vigorously to his team. Catalano doesn't hit it the best, and it's covered as arms are flying out. And Jose Alfaro gets swept in the face, but no foul. Here's a play being developed by Stefan Yates. In the middle is Fazili. Out wide is Faria. And set the cross right to the hands of Montenegro. Young goalkeeper from Deportivo Saprissa. Tony Fazili sit in front of the back three. You start to hear that. It's Costa Rica now and switch to a back line of three. Allowing Walter Cortez to be more offensively oriented. That's why you also see the ability of or, or the propensity of Cristian Munoz to play more as a deep lying midfielder but it's a barca is not going to go as Julian Dunn just swipes that ball wide and it'll be a water break for the two teams and that'll be at the 72nd minute of play. So it's been a bit of a of an interesting set of circumstances that we've seen develop in this second half. Canada at this point, maybe not having the same intensity as they did before, but neither is Costa Rica. So I think things start to even out because the drop in intensity hasn't been so much where Canada's missing out on anything. They're still getting into that final third. They're still getting even to that final quarter of the pitch where they've caused some discomfort. And also we start to see Costa Rica from a tactical standpoint start to change their shape a little bit more. You see one of the players that was more effective in the midfield drop back and be that protection in front of the back line of three. You see also with Walter Cortes, he starts to play out a little bit wider, but he's not getting the ball as much. He's become the principal target, but he's not in a position where he can really associate with anyone in the middle because Costa Rica has lost the middle of the pitch. Roy Bustamante, Andres Gomez really haven't been able to get into the groove of the game. It's Bustamante with the ball. Although Bustamante has been more involved with trying to start to transition or start to try to move the ball a little bit better. 
Shot that goes and skips off the very top corner of the frame and ends up going just wide again. The difference right here as it's Julian Cordero. It skips off the post and the post it, it looked like initially it was right off the corner. Yeah, right off the corner. It did skip right there. And Costa Rica. Slowly waking up, I guess, if you will. Okello. Nice play there by Alfaro. As Bustamante loses the ball in Canada, now starting to break out. Five on six as Costa Rica drop back. Petrazo. Cortes giving chase. Still will be a throw in for Los Ticos. This result favorable for both Suriname as well as Cuba as both teams ended up with a 1-1 draw. It does make, I don't know if it makes their job more complicated, it just makes both these teams evenly match at this stage. Although the two favorites to come away with World Cup spots will be coming tomorrow, the two, two of the favorites in Mexico and the United States as they'll be facing off their respective groups. Group C, kind of rare to see both the US and Mexico in the same group but that's the way things were dealt in this tournament. Here's Abarca. That ball goes just wide. It's gonna be a goal kick here for Canada. As we get into the final 15 minutes, looks like Okello's down. with the humidity starts to become a factor. And it's actually Noble Okello start to slowly come out. He has to come off the pitch because of course the medical staff did come onto the pitch so he has to step off with them. See how things play out here in these final few minutes. Canada still looking to penetrate, looking to go down the wings. I found the crosses, but the crosses have been right to this is a third and final substitution. It's Jexi Harkin from Municipal Liberia. It's a final substitution. He comes on for Julian Cordero. substitution made in the 77th minute. So Costa Rica out of substitutions. Just to see if Canada need to make one more and they will. And coming on will be Alessandro Hoyapur. Hoyapur coming on and he's of course with Vancouver. He's in their academy. This is all we have, this is all there is. And both teams are looking to get the three points with what they have as Faria getting spoken to by the referee. Brance Camacho. Heads up with that ball. Aaron.
errant pass, and it's Cristian Munoz starting the counter. Goes deep, looking over for Alfaro. Can he beat his defender? Alfaro looking to position himself, turns around, has some support. Here's Abarca with the shot. Oh, the shot ends up almost a throw in. It will it be, it probably will be, and it is. Abarca ends up mishitting that ball. Quickly, how things change is Alfaro. You can start looking at him as man of the match for Costa Rica. You'd have to look at two players and the foul being committed there by Benson Fazili. minute so we get into the final 10 minutes of this match still level at one for this as well as the recently entered Harkin Cortez was very involved towards the end of the first half but hasn't had the same influence Bustamante there committing the foul that would be Canada's ball so again it, it's both the collective but also the sum of parts that have been developing in the middle coming through as Hoyapur but Hoyapur being able to start to find some space in the middle Bustamante shielding it for Cortez but not really helping out there and Faria coming through and it'll be a foul in favor of Canada as Costa Rica have not been able to, so to solve those respective puzzles, Cortez getting a little bit, getting a little bit testy. Branse Camacho's and calm down a little bit. He's telling his goalkeeper to be aware. Of course, his son in Montenegro's eyes. This favors Canada a great deal. And there's going to be a card. Look into the back pocket. There's a red card as looks like Rocco Romeo's been sent off. the worst possible time for Canada. Paul Stalteri cannot believe it. You're gonna see right here. And right there. A bit of lack of discipline there. Antonio Rocco Romeo gets sent off. He, there's no other way to put it. He fell into the trap. And when the replay scene, Paul Stelteri will see that and be very aware of it. And you can make an argument that the Costa Rican player can also say that he, you know, he's jabbing him and trying to provoke him. Finally, ball comes through and now Costa Rica will be playing with 11 compared to Canada's 10 for at least the remainder of the match. Dropping back done, also dropping back in the middle is Benson Fazili. It's very, it was one of those moves of irritation and Rocco Romeo fell right into it. Fazili, here's a good chance for Canada. That's Faria looking to set up. Oh, but that ball gets deflected on route to goal. Montenegro has a man wide open, and that is Andres Gomez. He has lots of room to roam down the right-hand side. He's being marked there by Stefan Yates. Ball back into the middle as it goes to Cristian Munoz. He starts pushing, goes right back into the middle. Ball in, no, no foul, no, 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 no foul. That 
was an offside there. You can see right here, right there. No, 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 no. It wasn't an offside. It wasn't a penalty either. So I guess a double negative ends up being a positive for Canada there. As Faria, Fazili gets bodied off the ball. He goes right to Faria. He's gotten very inspired in Canada. Mind you, they are playing a man down, just in case it didn't look like it. Munoz, they're leaving. There's something that can be noticed is that Canada are leaving the middle of the pitch a bit exposed, especially when Faria starts pushing up. Ruby, Petrazo. Out wide again as it goes to Pedrazo and Hoyapur. Yates. Ooh. Dangerous balls. It skips right in front of Montenegro, but he feels it to perfection. Cortes. Abarca, he does have accompaniment from that man right there, number 16, Harkin, and he's offside. This time he's offside. This time he was offside, but. into the final five minutes. Harkin, that touch a little bit too far out. So we've seen our first sending off of the, ma of the tournament. A couple of minutes ago was Antonio Rocco, and unfortunately for him, he was the man that equalize things for Canada in the 51st minute. And now a yellow card being issued. As again, another ball that goes through. saying that they're playing better a man down, but they have not made that difference or that disadvantage from their standpoint really hold them back. They've been actually much better than Costa Rica to a certain extent. Petrazo. He does have Fazili in the middle and Hoyapur looking to make something happen. And now in the midfield, it's Bustamante. Pokes it through, here's Cortez, has a Barca on the left, has Harkin as he continues floating and so dangerously, dangerously offside and a, a foul being called there as a Barca. So I couldn't press anymore, so he runs right at Hoyapur. Munoz. Final two and a half minutes. It's gonna go through. And a foul right outside trying to make sure because the referee was pointing towards the spot, but was it going to be in? Was it going to be out? That was a big question. Let me I have to see the replay here. Here, right there in Nabarca. At the last minute, you start to see the shift by Fazili coming through and it'll be a good chance here for Cristian Munoz. 
Now, there's a sector of the pitch where you don't need to put a lot of power on the ball to be able to put it through. Just get it over the wall and you've won half the battle. So Terry frenetically telling him to go towards the inside. Munoz looking, and okay, he's already wanting to decide where the ball is gonna be placed. Telling his teammates, okay, fine. Let's see. There's a big, big play emerging here. Will it be? It looks like it's Munoz's. He's shielding everyone away from the ball. Doesn't need a lot of power. Just needs to place it. Cortez also setting himself up. Faria doing the right thing as the ball is going to be touched. Let's see what. Munoz can do. Tries to go low, again, not here. And a good chance here for Canada as they're able to recover the ball. Quickly moving forward as it's Canada with Legault. Three on two, now three on four, as it's again Jake Ruby, but that attack ends up going off. Not good chance as Legault runs into space. Gives it right back though. Chasing it is gonna be Hoyapur. Ruby, what a wasted opportunity there by Costa Rica. That was probably the best chance that we're gonna get in this half. And somehow, Munoz put that ball low. Not sure what he was seeing there, but those types of balls, if you put them over, the Canadian fans asking for the corner, not getting it. There'll be five minutes of stoppage time. Added by fourth referee Luis Santander of Mexico. Canada now dropping back and hoping for the best. Foul being committed by Karkin there inside the area. So we're into the final few minutes. Still, the way this match is going, there could be one more. Still. Seems like there's one more goal in there, although could be teased as the foul by Harkin doesn't get called. It's Costa Rica's ball instead, and the yellow card will be issued to Stefan Yates. Fifth yellow card of the match. Cortez. Bustamante, as Munoz is able to recover, goes back to Cortez. Looking to cross it back into the middle. Brought back down nicely as it's going to be Petrazo breaking it out. Going to Dadaluk. Munoz again. And finally it's Harkin recovering it, going out wide. A big foul, and it'll be Hoyapur getting the infraction called. Halfway through stoppage time here. Abarca making the run, but that pass very difficult as Costa Rica now starting to run through. Trying to keep it wide, trying to open Canada's defense up a little bit more. That's Cortez making a run down the left side. Behind him, as he's chased down by the goal. Trying to get back into position. It's Cortez with Harki. Now it's Abarca. 
Abarca back into the middle. Bustamante. And Canada will be very satisfied with the result, knowing how things played out on the final 10, 15 minutes of this match. Knowing how the first 10, 15 played out, and Costa Rica will have that ball go out of bounds. So it'll be a good result for Paul Stolteri's side. Again, I'm talking about adding the context of what's going on in these past few minutes. That needs to be understood a little bit more and why Canada would be satisfied with it. And they showed a great deal of character, especially going down a man to continue attacking. Now, you know, Costa Rica's been able to add a lot more as it's Legault. Out wide was Petrazo, but he wasn't going to get that ball as it got deflected en route to him. Abarca opening up. Abarca, here's a chance. Ball coming through. The ball goes to Josue Alfaro in the 95th minute. Costa Rica take the lead. Two to one. And again, a lot of the credit has to be given to that young man, number seven, Josue Almarca, Jose Alfaro. Pushes that ball forward. At the last second, Ruby couldn't get there. And Costa Rica are able to eke one out. Abarca was the only one that was running at the defense, the only one that was truly finding the right angle to be able to hook up with someone. And the young man from Universidad de Costa Rica sends it to the other young man from Deportivo Carmelita. And Costa Rica on the very last play, on the very last breath, on the very last chance of the match, come away with a two one victory. A huge result for Costa Rica. Extremely heartbreaking for Canada who had put up a sensational fight coming back, taking that second half, equalizing the game, going down a man, continuing to attack, but it wasn't enough. Your final score, Costa Rica two, Canada one.